Why why did your parents go to Jamaica? Or well, uh, that that one I can't answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. So how did your parents get to Jamaica? Hmm? Were they how did your parents get to Jamaica? Were they born there? My mom was born there. My dad I'm not sure. <laughs> You're not sure? Okay. Alright. So I was at St. Andrew High School from the second term of the school's opening. So I guess I'm one of the real old girls of St. Andrew. I was the only Jewish girl in St. Andrew High School for many years. And I never ever felt any uh, anti-Semitism. I didn't know what it was. I never knew about anti-Semitism until I went to America as a grown girl. We never had it here. Well, I'll be honest with you, when, we, when I lived in Kingston, from when I was a little girl, we never mixed just with Jewish families. No. We mixed with everybody. And I had no Jewish friend. I had one girl that was a Jewish girl. And all my friends were Christian children. And uh, we never, that never, never came, never came up at all. Never, never. No. And my mother, who came from Philadelphia, and who had been a product of anti-Semitism because in those days it was quite strong and she was always amazed at how wonderful it was here because we never thought about religion. I mean everybody was just... My father had some friends eh? and they want the friends and pray do what you know what I mean and they follow them friends and come to Jamaica. And when they come to Jamaica now they, they the people who employ them have them different, different places. My father went in St. Mary. Now my father used to do agricultural in India. I know the banana tree out, out the plant and all them things that. So they like him because he know the routines. Yeah. And he did well. After that, in 1920 or 1920, some came to Kingston Pen. They call the place Kingston Pen. Because I would find them live there. You know what I mean? He went to school in Kingston for a short while. My father never had no money to send me to high school. Yeah. So I went uh, to learn trade. And how I get a trade? There was a gentleman, Dr. Varma. He was the president of the East Indian Association. Mm -hmm. Because they, these people then form a, a, a society. I have most big people. Salam beta ki halba. Anyway, um, this comment I think is absolutely hilarious. Um, it's hilarious on its own. It becomes even more hilarious when you account for the fact that it's underneath a video that has nothing to do with what you're going on your little tirade about. Um, and secondly, it becomes funny because of this one punchline. It's the, I'm not even Indian. Now, as someone who is in school for African-American studies with a concentration in the Caribbean, um, let's break down something for you. A, being that race is a social construct. Being that it is a social construct, it is viewed differently along different societal lines. An example of that would be the United States and the one drop rule, right? Which, um, to answer the question of who is black, right? The answer would be um, any person with any known African ancestry, right? So this is the one drop rule, the black blood rule, um, the one black ancestor rule. Um, in, in Florida, the Jim Crow law was that if you had one black great grandparent, then the state would classify you as black. Which means using the United States historical definition, um, the four people in this photo, all of whom have a black father and a white mother, would be classified as black in the United States, according to the one drop rule. However, if you took them to South Africa, these people would not be considered black, they would be considered colored because of the racial definitions that exist within the country of South Africa. 
Now, much like the United States, Jamaica was also a society that was built on slavery. The difference is, is instead of enforcing the one drop rule, Jamaica had the brown racial group, which was the racial group between black and white. They were brown or free people of color, which is where these four people would fall under. A chart from a study done in 1960. Um, and if you look at how the races are broken down in Jamaica, you see there's African. Obviously, this would be people you classify as black. Um, European, people you would classify as white. There is East Indian and Afro East Indian, meaning East Indians and their mixed black descendants. Um, Chinese and Afro Chinese, meaning Chinese and their mixed black descendants. Um, Afro European or the group known as Brown. And then there's other. So in summary, the world does not revolve around the United States of America and their perceptions and view of any various topic. That's one. Two. Jamaica is a country where, due to the Atlantic slave trade, the majority of the people are of African descent. Um, but due to things such as religious persecution, which led to Portuguese Jews and Syrian, Lebanese, Palestinian Christians coming to the island, as well as the indentureship after slavery, which led to a lot of Chinese and Indians coming to the island, there are some Jamaicans who have ancestry that is not solely African. Them having pride in that ancestry that is not African does not equal shame in the African ancestry. It just means that they are able to love themselves in their entirety. Out of many one people, folks. You are not Muslim yourself? No, I'm not Muslim. I'm not Hindu. We are Hindu. Not Hindu. You are Christian. I'm more closer to Christianity more yes. than you. Okay. Yeah. I'm closer. What's the whole purpose, the whole symbol of it? Oh, this is, this is feeling, this is Muslim. And it's feeling memory of Muslim and Asset. It's a Muslim celebration. The different, the different things on it, it has a special symbol or a special meaning? Or no, you, your, you create your, your own style, you match your paper, it's how you want your instructor to look. You create your own thing, right? So every year it has a different structure? Different style. Maybe. But this date, you have the date, we take out the Muslim, you have to know the date. You just pick a date on the calendar in August. You work by the new moon. And you count into the closest weekend. With ten days after it, you count into the closest weekend. By that, you have a good moon up there. There's Tonight, the, the moon full. Yeah, yeah. The 30th of August. Okay, sing the performance of the music. What music is that? Okay, this is Tasa music. Tasa. Tasa. Tasa is a little one day. You hear that sound here? Tasa is the one that keeps the timing of the music. Just like the keyboard. Okay. That's the lead instrument of the band. Okay. That's the lead instrument in the Tasa band. The Tasa. I would play like five, six bass drums. Bass drums. Okay. And a cymbal. We call it the judge. Wait. But are there Muslims in this neighborhood still? Yes, the gentleman who teach me to build the first, he says he's Muslim. Okay. He's not here right now. Okay. Well, he, was, he was here last night. He but was here last night. His father is from India. Okay. His father is trying to do the ritual part and cut the dirt and cut the language. We don't even know if we cut the language. We just do the thing. Why you don't shut your mouth? Why you don't shut your mouth? You really, your level of immaturity is, 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 is be Recently, a lot of you have been asking what is an Indo-Jamaica and how did Indians come to the island of Jamaica? Well, I have an answer for you. By 1838, slavery and its hell-spawn apprenticeship would finally come to an end in the island of Jamaica, meaning that the African population that had formerly been enslaved would now see freedom. However, the British did not want to pay their formerly enslaved Africans and sought after their colonies in British India to start recruiting persons from there. And so from 1845 to 1917, approximately over 36,000 South Asian persons were brought from the Indian subcontinent 
continent to work plantations on the island of Jamaica. Now included in that number were also my great great grandparents. Now those brought from India to Jamaica were supposed to be returned to India after a period of time. However, the British flipped the script and by the end of it, two thirds of the Indians that had been brought remained on the island of Jamaica. Over time, through resilience, strength and faith, these persons developed communities all of their own, creating an identity that's uniquely Jamaican and Indian. And to this, we need to address the misconception that every Jamaican is black. This is not the case. Exactly. What people do not realize it is that Jamaicans are many different ethnicities. What people also do not realize is that the motto of Jamaica is out of many one people. Now, when I went to Jamaica in 1996, I saw Jamaicans of many different ethnicities and that does include white people. There are white people who are born in Jamaica who call themselves Jamaicans. So at the end of the day, this man is talking sense. Listen to what he's saying. So great question. Jamaica is not an ethno state, so there's various ethnic groups that live within Jamaica. And let me let's talk about some of them. Starting off, we have some members of the Taino or Arawak peoples, the indigenous native people of Jamaica. Jamaica used to be a Spanish colony and then a British colony, so most white Jamaicans can trace their ancestry back to the Spanish, the British, the Scottish, the Irish, the Welsh, as well as the German. This is Guy Harvey. If you're from like South Florida, you've probably seen his paintings. He's actually 10th generation Jamaican. His ancestors came in like the 1800s. Fastest man in the world, Usain Bolt, representing the Afro-Jamaicans. Sean Bridge Mohan, the first Jamaican to race in the Kentucky Derby, is representing the Indo-Jamaicans. Member of Parliament, Delroy Chuck, representing the Chinese Jamaicans. Charles Palash is a mineralogist, and I'm using him to represent the Jewish Jamaican population. Here we have the late Edward Zaka, who was a chief justice of the Jamaican Supreme Court. And while his ethnic group is what we call in Jamaica the Syrians, they actually hailed from what is now modern-day Lebanon, Palestine, and Syria. This is why our nation's motto is out of many one people. 